In this video, we will look at automating the wedge pattern. Wedge patterns form when trend lines converge. When wedge patterns form, it indicates that traders are undecided on the next move. The next move could be a reversal or continuation. Reversal chart patterns signal that the ongoing trend is about to change course. On the other hand, continuation patterns mean the price trend will continue in the same direction after a brief or short period of consolidation. A falling wedge pattern shows a bullish pattern. In the images, we see two classes of bullish patterns, a continuation pattern on the left and a reversal pattern on the right. When the falling wedge forms an uptrend, as shown on the left, it will most likely continue after a brief consolidation period. During the consolidation period, prices reach lower highs and lower lows. The bias will return to the market and drive up the price after this period. When the falling wedge forms a downtrend, as shown on the right, a reversal is likely to occur next. The price will break out in the opposite direction as shown in the image. This indicates that buyers outweigh the sellers to increase the price upwards. When we code the falling wedge pattern, we need the slopes to be negative and converging. A rising wedge can indicate a bearish continuation or reversal pattern. On the left, we have the bearish continuation, while on the right, we have the reversal pattern. During the consolidation period, prices reach higher highs and higher lows. For the rising wedge to form, sellers have to outstrip the buyers. When we code the rising wedge pattern, we need the slopes to be positive and converging. We will present the code now. The code is a modification from Code Trading's video titled, Triangle Price Pattern Detection. Please check the link below to the video. Here is the final code that will provide wedge chart patterns for us. We read the data and remove all non-trading periods. We set up a new column called pivot to hold all pivot points. This line of code will get all pivot points and save them to the pivot column. It uses the pivot underscore ID function to achieve this result. We will look more in depth into this function in a moment. This line of code gets the pivot positions. The pivot positions are for visualizing purposes. The point underscore position underscore plot function results in the following plot. You can see that point 137 is a low pivot point as it is lower than three bars to the left and right. Similarly, Point 182 is a high pivot point because it is higher than three bars to the left and right of it. You can also see other pivot points. The next bit of code is the most important as it identifies the wedge patterns across our data and saves the associated graphs. Here is a sample of the images. Let's take a deep dive into some of the functions. But first let's go through the libraries used. We first import the MPL finance to plot our candlestick graphs. We import matplotlib to save the graphs, while the pandas library is for data manipulation. The SIP library runs the linear regressions to find the slopes. The first function we will look at is pivot underscore ID, which finds if the current bar is a pivot point. The function will look at N1 candles to the left and N2 candles to the right of a given bar to ascertain whether it is a pivot point. The function find underscore wedge underscore points is the main function of the code. The function takes the old data frame and back candles as arguments. The back candles is the look back period from the current bar. We loop over all the bars in our data. For the given bar, we define the coordinates of the maximas and minimas as numpy arrays. In the next section, we find the minimas and maximas for a given bar. Note that the range starts with a certain number of candle bars before the current bar. These arrays will be used to run linear regressions to find the slopes of the potential wedge patterns. The minimas and maximas must meet this condition before we can consider a point as a potential wedge point candidate. The next section will define if the wedge chart pattern is detected. We want the R squares of the linear regressions to be greater than 0 0.9.
In other words, we want the correlation of the minimus and maximus to be high. When we set the R-squared to be high, we will find fewer wedge chart patterns in the data. You can of course change the parameters once you have the code. We also want the slopes to be in the same direction. The next snippet of code checks if the lines are at the start but eventually converge. We used the following parameters because they worked for us. But you can change them when you run the code. When we run the program we get the following images. We hope you found the video useful. We would like to hear from you, so please leave your comments below. Thank you for watching.